Hello everybody, this is Michael with Hootenanny Homestead. I'd like to welcome you to our garden. What we're looking at here is the uh, Ipomea carnea, aka the bush morning glory, or the morning glory tree. We uh, have this out here on the homestead. Uh, we have hundreds of starts of these plants. We have kept it going and kept it alive year after year we have to bring this plant in even though it is an evergreen in the tropics it doesn't like the winters here in oklahoma so we have to aid it if we want the continuation of it and so by doing that we go through and we cut starts off of it and we put those starts in a five gallon bucket now this plant around the world is used medicinally and it is highly toxic to livestock so you want to make sure that you place this plant away from your livestock uh, the seeds flowers leaves all of it she produces a, a white latex whenever she's uh, scratched broken uh, or disturbed so i do highly recommend you wear gloves when working with this plant uh, around the world she's used for uh, wound healing uh, an antibacterial anti-inflammatory gastrointestinal issues, skin conditions, snake bites. Um, she's been known to treat diabetes uh, and to aid in high blood pressure. She uh, has a woody and sometimes a hairy stalk on her. Um, you, can, uh, you can feel small little hairs on her whenever you rub your hand down her. Uh, her stock and <clears throat> she's native to South America uh, she like I said she grows in the tropics down there and she can contain uh, a lot of oh I guess bioactive compounds including alkaloids flavonoids glycosides um, she aids in diabetes because she reduces sugars uh, she has fatty acids esters alcohol and tannins and because of that, she becomes toxic to animals. So, and that's another reason as to why you really want to wear gloves when working with this plant. And, you know, just in case uh, it gets on the skin and gets into the skin. Now, although we've never used her medicinally, sometimes the beauty of a plant is uh, medicine in itself. So... What I'm doing is I'm going through, I'm cutting and placing them in a five gallon bucket. I'll put water in this bucket and we'll place them in the greenhouse uh, under a shell, which doesn't get direct sunlight. We kind of force her to go dormant by doing that. When spring arrives, Um, April, we'll take her out of the greenhouse and we will uh, start potting her up or we will go ahead and find uh, a place on the homestead where we want her to be for the year. Uh, we like her in the garden because she is, uh, she brings in the pollinators, uh, bees love her, wasp, uh, flies, um, and, uh, you know, honeybees aren't the only thing that pollinates. Um, so because of that, we like to have her in the garden. And what I'm doing, like I said, taking the tops now, I'm printing them back. We'll come back to get the root. We'll dig them up and we'll put them in a tote. Uh, I got to go get some soil for that. And... We'll keep her watered. Uh, we water them probably about once a month, maybe. Uh, we'll do a, a finger test to see if she uh, needs a drink. But she's extremely low maintenance and does so much. Um,
for your garden. These here that we have here, these were ones, plants that we didn't sell last year. And so they will be three years old come next spring. And what I'm, you can see, I'm snipping, you can see the old part, I believe we have where we have cut last year uh, like this stock here is last year's stock this is year number two that comes off of that you know she'll get extremely tall she can get up to 12 to 15 feet tall um, if allowed it's kind of hard for her to get that in one season but it can be done Now this plant here is uh, a plant that we use to bring in uh, some income on the homestead. When we start selling plants in the spring. Now when I learned about this plant, uh, it was probably about 10 years ago. Uh, and. I've just, I've loved it ever since. You know, it's, even if it didn't bring in income, you know, learning uh, about the ethnopharmological studies that's been done over it, it it's really interesting to see how uh, people use this plant around the world, um, mainly in India. Uh, it was, it, you know, it grows on the roadside over there in ditches and they consider it invasive. Um, which of them being uh, somewhat tropical can explain why it's so invasive. But you know, my ears perked when I heard that it could be a uh, snake bite medicine and uh, a diabetes biter. And you know, I, I'm not giving medical advice. You know, I'm, we're all responsible of doing our own research and I suggest you do the same. Uh, don't just take my word for it. And it's, uh, you know, the scientific name is Ipomia or Ipomia. It's I P O M O E A C A R N E A. Ipomia carnea. But, you know, look into it. And she's so showy and flashy. She, uh, she blooms in early morning. And throughout the heat of the day, her flowers will close up. Uh, similar to like a, a four o'clock. When the blooms close up, they'll house up uh, bees. Little bees will get trapped on the inside of it, and in the morning, it releases them. <laughs> you can see it's just growing right through this pot, down into the ground. Now she can get top heavy. There's not much to her root system. 
Uh, so you'll you'll need a staker or planter next to uh, a fence or uh, a trellis of some type so that she can grab on or you can tie her to it she won't grab onto it um, so all of our leaves will go into the compost uh, any bits that we don't use, uh, we don't give it to the animals. The goats, I mean. And actually, uh, if you do research on it, you'll uh, you'll come across to where studies were shown where they were. It was given to goats, and uh, it can cause some strange behaviors in goats. Uh, such as uh, dizziness, um, uh, diarrhea, uh, and all of those things will usually lead to death. Um, it causes paralysis as well in animals. Now her, the latex that she produces um, is a bit of a sedative and Oxytocin, related to oxytocin? I believe I said that right. Um, so, and that's why I like wearing gloves with it. Um, When we lived in the city, uh, we had these growing by the fence, and you know, I was really amazed at how, you know, people they wanted to uh, state claim that this was a, a hibiscus, or um, I believe a, a couple of. Master gardeners had called it um, a hardy hibiscus, which it, it's not. It's not even related to a hibiscus. Um, it's more closely related to a sweet potato, actually. A sweet potato and a morning glory vine. A morning glory vine, because of the toxicity in it, of its medicinal value, uh, sweet potato family because of the healing properties in it. Um, I guess similar to the anti-sugars or the uh, how it can help be used to fight diabetes and high blood pressure. Same as sweet potatoes. Now the main thing about her, if you bring her in over winter, just keep her out of uh, freezing conditions. Stick her in the garage, stick her somewhere dark. Uh, you don't really have to do that either. You can put her in a sunny window and, but you know, she will get big on you. Probably larger than the allotted space for her to grow. Now you can't run your hand down her all the time. Uh, some of these are still green. So all it would do is just rip her straight, straight down. Um, you can do that a lot of times on the green parts.
so something else interesting that I found out about her is uh, she's used as tobacco pipes. Knowing that you can use her stem as a tobacco pipe was really interesting. Uh, it's hollow on the inside, uh, especially the larger it gets, uh, the more hollow the inside will get. And that saves you from having to, having to have clean it out uh, and process it. So we still have two more places. Uh, Charles went through yesterday and got the ones that we had in pots that while I was cooking dinner, um, we thought our freeze was gonna come yesterday, but it didn't. So, and that's what we're left with right there for right now. Uh, like I said, we'll come back out and dig up the root. But I'll just head on over here. Uh, he had clipped these yesterday as well. There was more. They had gone through the pot and through the jade pot and into the raised bed. Here we had them growing around in this herb bed with the oregano, rosemary. Sorry. So here's another bed that we have and I'm just going to go through and get her snip back. So we have about 20 plants in this bed. Another thing we have growing back here is yarrow. We have so much yarrow coming up.
by the wind. Uh, this ground is extremely worked up here, uh, soft, and so we should have staked them, uh, but it's, you know, end of the year, um, we'll just go ahead and, and pull them. I don't know if y'all can see or not. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So, this stock right here is where it was when we cut it last year. And so, I just go right above that and make a new cut. And that's what we're left with. That. Yeah. You want to go ahead and put water in here. You want to fill it about halfway full if you use a five gallon bucket. Um, you know, they still need water. Uh, they don't go dormant completely. And we are forcing the dormancy on them. Um, they, they don't have to go dormant. Like I said, you can bring them on in, put them in a sunny window. We have an unhappy camper out there. She wants out. Let's go for a walk. So I'll probably do that after this. Take them down into the woods and see if a second attempt, I don't know if y'all saw the first attempt of trying to take them for a walk. It didn't turn out too good, but they got to spend the day out anyways. I like to lay the bucket on its side when I do this. Uh, that makes sure they all fall and it leaves a, an empty space on top and it kind of tells me how full the bucket is getting. 